Previously, I showed you how to create your own Adobe LED with sound reaction. You connect an addressable LED strip to it, and whenever you hear a sound, it will flash or react to it accordingly. If you did it, then chances are you know that it can be bulky, which you have to hide somewhere, and it's time consuming because you have to do all of the wirings. Today, I'm happy to say that there's a better solution from smartlight.me. Zip! Look at this thing. It's tiny. Here it is compared to a quarter. There's the infrared to do the remote if you have one. On the bottom, there's nothing. You can pop it out if you want. There's the DC barrel connection to feed it 5 volt to 24 volt DC. On one on the side, that's how you feed the LED strip in. You only need three wires. And on the other side, there's the USB-C input. Here it is compared to my home ghetto setup. So yeah, this thing is much cleaner, much smaller, and it works right out of the box. There's no fuss, no muss. Here you can see I already connected the LED strip and all I'm missing right now is the USB-C power cord, which you can use any USB-C power cord. Inside the box, this is all you get. There's the controller itself. Just in case you don't have any USB-C cable lying around, you can always use micro USB. Plug it into this end right here to convert that micro USB into USB-C and then power it up. A flathead screwdriver is included and you'll definitely need this because the screw right here are so tiny. I have no idea why there's a small screw and a hex driver is included. I didn't use them at all. I will definitely use the two double side tape right here to mount this behind the shelf. Definitely not included is the addressable LED strip, which you see right here. Of course, you can certainly buy this from the same website, smartlight.me, or you can buy any addressable LED strip. My favorite right now is the addressable cop LED strip. Now, to make the addressable LED strip works with this controller, all you have to do is cut the head right off because there's no way you can feed this thing into this. So go ahead and cut it off and then feed the three wires in. Let's take a closer look to how you'll be feeding the strip into the controller. First, you have to release all of these screws out. Well, don't release it all the way, just release it about three turns using the included screwdriver. Once you rotate them about three turns, then you can feed the red wire into this slot right here. Next, feed the green core into this next slot, which is the data. Finally, the white core will be going into the ground, which is the last slot. Powering up this whole thing is pretty easy. All you have to do is feed it the barrel connection, which it takes from 5 volts all the way up to 24 volts. Because the LED strip that I'm using is only 5 volts, the DC power supply will have to be 5 volts as well. I don't have any 5 volts DC at the moment, but I do have plenty of USB-C. So that's why I'm going to use USB-C and feed it into this side right here to power up the whole controller and the LED strip. Here's another angle of the close-up to alleviate any confusion that you have with the connections. The red core goes into this slot right here. The middle core goes into the next slot. And finally, the last core, which is usually white, goes into the last slot right here. Once the unit is powered up, go ahead and jump onto your phone. Look for this access point. It will start with WLED. There you go. And click on it to sign in. There's actually no sign in, but just click on it and connect to it. Once you click on it, it will go straight to the website, and then you can control it all from there. So go ahead and give it a spin. Click on power to power up the uh, LED strip. Or in this case, power it off, because when it gets power, the LED strip automatically powers up. Here are all of the colors and the effects if you want. But of course, what we really want is connecting this to our home setup, our home assistant setup. So go ahead and click on Wi-Fi setup. In the Wi-Fi setup, give it your Wi-Fi name and the network password. If you don't care about static IP address, leave everything blank. And then go all the way down to click on save and connect. Give it about 30 seconds. If it works, if it jumps onto your network, then you will no longer see the Wi-Fi access point name WLED because now it's on your local network. Next, if you have Home Assistant, go ahead and connect it to your Home Assistant hub. So click on settings. Go over and choose integrations. You can see that it automatically detected it as SM lights. Click on configure. Click on submit. Select the area 
and then click on finish. I'm going to leave mine blank. Go all the way down to WLED. Click on devices. Click on the SM lights. And here are all of the available options. There's the preset, there's the power toggle, there's the color change. Lots and lots of options for you to play with in Home Assistant. I'll set up the automations later. But if you want, you can go straight to this IP address on your network. 192.168.1.31 Now, if you click on PC mode, it will let you see a bunch of options as well. This is much, much better than looking at it on the phone. I don't know why, but whatever firmware they loaded onto this controller seems to give us a lot more options than the one from the previous video that I made. I'm totally blown away. So what's my conclusion? If you want to tinker, if you want to learn, if you want to build yourself, then follow my other video. If you want something that's already made, ready to go, in less than like 5 minutes, get this controller from smartlights.me. There's absolutely no wiring, no configuration, no soldering, no nothing. Just open the box, connect the LED strip in, power it up, and bam, it just works. Alright, hopefully you found this video helpful and how to set up this controller. I really appreciate you guys subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.